Hello, it's Martin from Wisely Automotive and you probably clicked on this video because you want to know how to remove the previous owner's information and how to set up your own profile in your newly acquired Polestar 2. Well, let me stop you there. I'm afraid you already made one mistake by not buying from us because all of this would have been sorted and explained to you, but all jokes aside, let me jump in and show you the process. The first thing you need to do before jumping into the vehicle is making sure that you've got all the key fobs which are meant to come with the vehicle. These can differ based on the age of the car and we've already made a video describing all of that and I will leave that linked in the top right hand corner. Basically for this car it's just one big key fob and one activity key fob. I will pop those underneath the central armrest here. There's a little key symbol where the keys have the best signal reception even if they're out of battery. With that, we can now proceed into the menus. First of all, just to reiterate, the way you know that someone is actually tied to this car is that if we look at the profile section, you can see that there is an Alex who used to be an admin for this vehicle. To go into the settings, you just press the apps icon and all the way at the bottom here, you need to go into system, then reset options and delete all data factory reset. This will basically remove the previous owner's personal information and reset all the settings as well. So let's proceed. And the car is now going through the factory reset. Obviously this can only be done while the car is in park and usually takes a couple of minutes. After a couple of reboots the infotainment is coming back to life. As you can hear the air conditioning has started up as well into its default state and the screen should welcome us with the setup page now. You can obviously proceed through this and that's what I would recommend. But if you don't have the time for it and you want to get driving immediately, you can always just press the home button and the system will let you proceed to the home page. But I would say it's definitely worth setting up the car. Otherwise it will keep you bugging with lots of notifications because some of the settings will not be saved to your profile. Either way, as you can see in the top right hand corner, the previous profile has been removed and we are now starting fresh. If you want to get back into the profile setup, you can always just swipe down from the top of the screen, which brings you into the notification center and you can proceed right from there. The Pulsar 2 running an Android based infotainment system, you definitely want to accept the Google terms of service because that's how you achieve most of the functionality. And as mentioned on top of that, you want to finish setting up your profile. The region has been correctly detected as United Kingdom, so I will proceed. And now we want to set up our Polestar ID. Again, you can skip these steps if you don't want to set it up, but I would highly recommend doing so. So give me a second to put in my username and password. If this is going to be your first Polestar and you don't already have the Polestar ID, I would highly advise to do this in advance of the collection or delivery. We can proceed now. And I will proceed with the recommended services. The Polestar 2 is a modern electric car, which means it supports over-the-air software updates, just like your phone gets them on a basically monthly basis. So in the interest of not only having the latest features, but also latest security and vulnerability fixes, I would definitely say enable the automatic software update download. And now that we are done with the Polestar side of things, it's time to log into our Google account. If you don't remember your password, don't worry, you can sign in with your phone. You simply get a QR code which you scan with your camera app and it will take you into a Google sign-in page. And if you have any sort of password manager enabled on your phone, the phone should fill in the password automatically. Once you confirm everything on your phone, the system will update and recognize that you are logged in and it will let you proceed. Important to mention here that not all accounts are supported. So some business accounts, for example, do not work. Moving on, you get a quick guide of how the Google Assistant works. And yes, I agree to the personalized results. Again, this being an Android product, you can download apps from the Google Play Store into the vehicle. Not all of the ones which are on the phones are supported, but the basics are here. Google Maps and the Google Assistant are already pre-installed, but depending on your choice of preferred music service or navigation apps, you can definitely get some additional ones. But don't worry, you can also do this later. You don't have to commit at this stage. So I will skip for now. The vehicle took about a minute to update all of the apps and now we are done which brings us back to the same home screen as before, but now with our personalized information. So for example, if I go into Google Maps and agree with all the privacy terms and conditions, you will see that my favorite locations and pins will have carried over. And if I go into the search field, my home and work addresses and reasons, just like I have on my phone, have moved over as well. With the infotainment side of things sorted, the last stage is to set up the Polestar mobile app because this is separate from what we have done so far. All you need to do is go into the App Store or Google Play Store, depending on what phone you have, download it 
and once it's ready you just open it up and the instructions are all there but this is not quite as intuitive as it seems unfortunately you need to tap the pair phone button and that brings you into this scanning for cars menu now to enable the pairing mode from the vehicle side you need to go into your profile click the arrow I would recommend doing this for yourself or whoever is going to be the admin first and then worrying about adding additional drivers and in here you need to click the digital key and remote functions and lastly pair phone at the bottom of the screen it's searching for keys because again for this stage you need to have all the keys in the vehicle and now we get a pairing code on the screen in the vehicle and also in the app so i will just confirm on both ends then the numbers match I can name the vehicle, especially if I have multiple Polestars, you can have multiple ones in the app at the same time, so not to lose track, but that's not the case for me. And we can also enable the digital key functionality. So as of right now, you can use the app for remote connectivity, remotely locking and unlocking the vehicle by pressing the buttons in the app, but you do not have the comfort access functionality. Whereas if I click activate digital key, I just need to enable my phone to use Bluetooth with the Polestar app. And as you can see now we've got the confirmation that the phone is fully connected. So if I tap get started you will see all the functionality we have available to control remotely. This sometimes takes quite a while for the vehicle to become live and the data to come through into the app. So we will close that for now but that's basically the setup process finished. For the old-fashioned smartphone connectivity for Bluetooth media and hands-free call streaming you need to do that again as a separate process right in the infotainment screen here by pressing on the connect your phone tile and then pressing the plus button again. With my phone unlocked I just press pair new device and then navigate to the Bluetooth section of the settings on my iPhone. At that very moment the phone appears in the infotainment system as available so we can proceed through there i just confirm the code on my phone that it's matching the one on the screen and i will allow my contacts to sync which means if you get an incoming phone call you do not just get a number showing but the full name as well and that's the bluetooth functionality setup depending on how privacy conscious you are you can also allow the names to sync into the google cloud for better voice recognition performance and that's it, we are now connected for both hands-free phone calls and for Bluetooth music streaming. In fairness, as I mentioned, you will probably never use the Bluetooth media streaming because you have got the built-in apps. So while you are parked, you have got access to YouTube and you can also go into the Google Play Store and download the apps you want for your music streaming. The big names such as Spotify, Amazon Music and YouTube Music are all available and by utilizing the infotainment system directly, the quality is a little bit better and obviously you're saving the data on your phone plan because it's using the car's built-in 4G SIM card for all of the streaming purposes. If you're a hardcore Apple user and you want to utilize the Apple CarPlay, it's wired only as of right now, which is March 2024. And crucially, you will need to plug into the left USB-C port, which is the white outline, as that one is power and data. All the other ones in the vehicle are power only. And that's it. Thank you very much for watching. If you're in the market for a Polestar 2, definitely get in touch with us because we have plenty of Polestar 2s available across different price points and specifications. If you want to learn more about the car, make sure to check out our full Polestar 2 playlist. And if you are interested in EVs in general, make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thank you again. See you in the next one.